right. Justice League Dark Apocalypse War is the last film in the DCAU. Oh man. This is a culmination of all 15 films. This is the last film that would end the entire universe. And this film is all about when Earth is being decimated by Darkseid after a poorly executed war planned by Justice League against Darkseid. The remaining members of Suicide Squad, Teen Titans, and the Justice League all come together to try to find a way to stop Darkseid and save their existence. I love the DCAU. I don't love every film in the DCAU. There are some films that were great. There are some films that was like, eh. There are some directions they took certain characters I liked. There are some directions they took certain characters I hated. And I'm looking at you, Batman Hush. As a Batman fan, I'm standing here today to let you guys know I saw Batman Hush, and I cannot believe that they butchered one of the best storylines of all time. There are some characters I gravitate towards in this universe, and going into this film, I think if you have an attachment to some characters while watching the other 15 films, then th you will be gut busted. Th this film really no! rips your heart out and squeezes it, and then it does the Mortal Kombat shit and squeezes your heart and drinks the blood in front of you while you die. This film wrecks your heart in so many ways where I literally was like... <laughs> what the fuck? This film is rated R, and this film goes for the hardcore rating R. Probably last week, I reviewed a film called Mortal Kombat uh, Scorpion's Revenge. I talked about how bloody, how hardcore bloody that was. This film right here was bloodier than Mortal Kombat Re Scorpion's Revenge. Limbs get cut off. We see skeletons getting ripped out of bodies. We see organs and body parts being squished to mush. I can't say who it is, but characters die. This is what you expect going to a film like this, but you don't expect characters to die a certain way. Once you see how characters die a particular type of fashion, it could rub you the wrong way. It definitely rubbed me the wrong way. Was not expecting the shit. But I still liked the direction they took some of the action sequences and some of the story elements. I did like that. Like I said before, some people are not going to like it. They're going to be like, eh, no, no, no. It's not going to be my cup of tea. You know, I don't want to see this bloody, hardcore, you know, violent extravaganza. I don't want to see that. All that. For a certain degree, this film goes for the hardcore rating and it has some elements from certain comic book moments and there are some few twists and turns and they take characters to different directions where it's, it could it could split the audience. So it's really give or take. But this right here is basically an established universe. So there's going to be like certain new elements they will add. And also there's some character development that was developed from other films that got fleshed out in this film. Darkseid was pretty much sitting on his chair for most of the film, but he, he did throw down. But Darkseid is being voiced by Tony Todd, I noticed, because of his voice. And I was like... <laughs> Your autograph. So this film does have some exposition to explain certain details, so that's not really a detailed flaw. And for the matter, the matter is that we're seeing all these characters, every character that we've seen from all 50. 14 other films have come together in this film and it's extravaganza. We some, we also, we've seen characters' interactions that can, we haven't seen before, and I think that's probably the main thing you would get a kick ass for the first time. You got characters on characters upon characters, and they're putting into this apocalyptic scenario. Where I feel like three characters get like the most screen time in this film. I feel like the first character is Superman, the other character, Constantine. And the third, Raven. I feel like uh, Constantine and Raven have the best character arcs in this film. Constantine right here. Constantine, you know, he, I feel like he was the best character in this film. And he's being performed by Matt Ryan. And Matt Ryan, he did his part. He was perfect. I can't think of anyone else who could voice the talent of Constantine. But Constantine has a fleshed out character arc that is realized. It progressed his character and also Raven's character arc. She's dealing with the demon, you know, inside of her head. No, that's a spoiler. If you haven't seen the other films, there is a story element revolving around that. It brings like an emotional layer to an already downtrodden and vicious script 
So uh, it, it, it brings tension, tension above tension, hardcore tension that you're not really expecting in the third act. As for the cons in this film, I can't really think of any cons other than there are some, a few little plot errors and continuity errors that the film sort of doesn't really flesh out in a sense. But outside of that, that's pretty much more like a nitpick. Uh, this film is the last film of the universe, and the film does a good job of ending the entire universe, giving it a bittersweet, melancholy feel. Um, I wouldn't say it's happy. I wouldn't say it's sad. I still enjoyed this movie despite going through so much emotion, go having so much hype and leaving the, leaving the film just feeling so downtrodden and worthless with myself. Outside of this, this is a good film. I still enjoyed myself. This is a kick-ass film. You know, I I I, I still enjoyed the f out this film. This was a, I, this film will leave you in the emotional wreck. This is an emotional roller coaster. These this film holds no boundaries, and it does a good job of developing their characters, and it does a good job of executing the moments. So I definitely got to give Justice League Apocalypse War, Christian Bale Batman. Definitely I will buy this movie on Blu-ray once it comes out on DVD. Now I just got to find the power to watch it again because it's so hard to watch of seeing certain characters in a certain way. So that's all I got to say. That's all I gotta say. You buy it on digital, only cost $19.99, but if you don't wanna buy it on digital, wait till it comes out on Blu-ray. It comes out on Blu-ray on May 20th, so definitely you can wait till then, but if you don't, just buy it now and be able to watch it and watch it now, so therefore you could see what I saw. Yeah. So I'll see you guys later in my next review. I will have the review of Climax. You have been warned. Till then, 